How's it going, everyone? We are here to check out some really cool stuff that has been added to staging and should it be coming in the next update to Rust. And my voice isn't completely back yet, as you can tell, but we're here and we're going to push through it. So the first thing uh, posted on Twitter or X uh, was by Alistair, and it's a cover of what this next month's update is going to be. And it's going to be the Cargo Ship and Harbor Monument event rework the more challenging launch site launch site apc which we'll show you as well uh, more ways to counter the oil rig which we showed in a previous video with the new moon pool and etc other rooms electricity re reworks which we will preview uh once that's all done because it's kind of a big thing first tc skin which we are going to show you here the minigun which we're going to show you a bunch of changes to the attack helicopter ai which we'll cover once those are complete and a lot of quality of life fixes. And then they said they're also working on a lot of stuff in the background, basically. Over the last 18 months, they have doubled in size. They have QA staff that's uh, big, and support teams have doubled and tripled. And uh, they said they want to talk about anti-cheat finally. And that's one of the things that they don't want to talk about because they don't want to give the cheaters hints at what they're doing. But basically here, you've got a lot of work is being done behind the scenes on anti-cheat, like I just said. Over the past and coming months, we slowly been closing information leaks such as network health, item stashes, auth lists, and more. We fixed several long last long standing cheat features, so that's really good. Expanding the support team size has also allowed them to get more staff to focus on anti cheat, which includes going into game, dealing with, and disrupting cheaters directly based on player reports. Some staff will soon be dedicated to anti cheat measures full time. So there you go. Here, there is the big cheater update for everyone. So that has always been a big thing, and uh, there it is. So here we have the first tool cupboard skin, and it is the Retro TC skin. Not sure what the price on this will be. It is a premium skin. Now, this does not mean that skins are now open for the community. Now, when it comes to the tool cupboards, I don't think it will ever be open to the community for making skins just because Facebunch really wants to make them something special, rare, and the fact that they just want to control the fact that it stays looking like a TC and doesn't become something crazy like a lot of the other community skins are. So, that's kind of my thoughts on it. They haven't said that themselves, so who knows, maybe it'll open up in the future. But as of right now, we have a official first TC skin. It does have some stickers on the side. I like the torn open back where you can kind of see everything going on. And then in the front, you have quite a bit going on here. You've got a lot of different monitors. There's a little fax machine. And then, what is all this going on? So, first of all, you have your upkeep. Then it tells you what your upkeep is and currently it's nothing because we're decaying and then it tells you how many blocks are in your base and you'll actually notice that it says zero doors so if we go ahead and take this door add ourselves a door it should update now to having another door and if we do that it should update to two doors the next time it cycles around and if we go ahead and put some resources in here should now go from decaying to showing us the actual exact upkeep. See, now we have two doors. So if you, you know, some people feel like some of this may be a little too OP. Also, I don't know if anyone noticed, but there's like the little glass door with all the junk behind it. I think that's a really nice feature as well. There's just, uh, there's a surge protector down there. There's just a lot going on with this. Anyways, getting sidetracked. Now, Wherever you are in your base, you can see your upkeep is 13 days. So really, this is all this is giving you is the 10 hours and 30 minutes without having to go click on it. And the other thing people are saying, well, I can see how many doors I have, so then I can see how deep people are. Well, if you're next to your TC and you're counting doors, you, you're probably not going to be doing very well. So that's not really a huge advantage. Now, the other question is going to be, do you have to be off to see it? And yes, you do. Authorized, you see it. No auth, can't see it. So that is a big question there. Next question is probably going to be, well, what about my favorite kind of TC setups? And it is exactly the same size, so it is not going to be affected. You can still do your little stuff with it. And also, if you do your little window triangles, you can actually see your upkeep displayed on there, which is nice. Or if you just do a full triangle, whatever. It, it, again, they didn't change the size of it. 
I, I a lot of people thought the chi size changed from the pictures, and it didn't. It looks bulkier, but it really isn't. So there you have that. Now, of course, when it comes to the attachments, you can still put on the transmitter, and you can also connect the industrial just as normal, but right now it's bugged to where you can't place it. But that is something the dev team is aware of, <coughs> and they are already going to be putting it to fix. Or are you going to be putting it to fix? They'll already be fixing it. There you go. So that pretty much does it for our TC. Let's go ahead and check out the minigun. So few things about the minigun. We do not know how it's acquired yet. We do not know anything past, uh, you know, if, if any of this that I'm showing to you will last. This is all subject to change. It could all be completely different. It's a work in progress still. They still have, you know, a whole nother week to hash out stuff. Now, as of right now, by default, it holds 300 ammo. It runs on 556, and all attachments can attach to it. Now, I'm not going to throw them on there right now, except we will do the silencer because uh, that, it's kind of funny. But uh, all the other ones kind of throw errors and can crash you right now. That's another thing that's being fixed. So, yeah, warning if you're testing on Staging Branch, some of the attachments are kind of funky. Default stats, as you can see here, are 45 damage, accuracy 2, recoil 0.5, fire rate of 600, and a range of 394. Now, we'll grab it here. It does have an accompanying backpack. And the backpack here actually has 4x7 slots. That is a lot of ammunition. Like... Uh, if you think about it, a thousand five five six is only going to fill up two rows in this thing. So, yeah. Now, can the other ammo go into it? As of right now, any ammo type can go into it. Now, currently, it is bugged. I can't switch ammo types. I'm pressing the button to right now, and as you can see, it, it, nothing's popping up. Now... We'll go ahead and take a look at this thing. It is a beautiful beast of a thing. I mean, look at this. I mean, how intimidating is that? Right? Got this awesome looking backpack. That belt feed. Very, very cool. So, how does the minigun work? Well, first you've got to hold your right click to spin it up. And then, once it's spun... Now, for some reason, like I said, it's not feeding from the backpack, but you can kind of get the idea there. Now, you can see it also chips away at its durability pretty quick. And when it comes to fixing it, I actually, uh, I've had to rebuild this here multiple times. So forgive me for not having my benches out. Alright, so we'll go ahead and do that. And we learned it. And then you'll see the backpack doesn't seem to be something you can learn. Now if we go and look, it's not default. But the minigun right now, it's a workbench level 3. 60 high qual, a rifle body, 3 springs, and 3 gears. Um, that's not crazy expensive. So, yeah, I don't know. I think the backpack may be one of those things where it is just a super rare drop. That's the only thing I can think, and that kind of limits the ammo, so you only do have the 300. And uh, maybe that will be the exclusive way of reloading it, which I, I don't know. We'll just have to see how it goes. I'm sure they're going to plan on balancing this thing somehow. But as of right now, this thing is just crazy. Now, if we do look in the actual tech tree, it's not in the tech tree. I don't know if they plan on keeping it out of the tech tree uh, on purpose and having it be a find only and research only, which I think would be kind of cool. But we'll just have to see what they end up doing with it there. And boy, it did not like me jumping up on that. Now, <laughs> the next question is, can you wear it with heavy armor? And yes, you most definitely can. So there you are, full heavy 
armor, everything. All right, the next question then is going to be, can you put it in a turret? And, well, you sure can. And while it's in the turret, it continues to spin and stay spinning. So I have a feeling it's meant to stay in a turret. So, yeah, I haven't got the 100% uh, answer on that, but it looks like it is meant to be in a turret. Now, right now, I'm not going to demonstrate it because it doesn't really shoot anybody very well it looks like the targeting just isn't programmed yet so that's kind of the thing going on there and the next question is going to be well if it goes in there well this is a turret right does it go in here and you bet it does but again it's just really wonky to shoot it, it doesn't seem quite right but there are those next big kind of questions of well what's it functional with then the next thing i did say that the silencer is kind of funny and i told you attachments are weird don't think that's going to be the permanent sound but uh yeah there's that so then the next thing is going to be well rating and it, it looks like explosive ammo shot out of this actually does less damage than usual but I, I that may have just been me miscalculating it also some folks on reddit noticed some stuff like that as well as i think a few people in the discord so i don't know maybe we're all imagining it i'm still tired and medicated one way or another if we put some rounds into a undamaged wall here just to kind of see and if we take a look it did almost no damage because I don't think I was actually hitting the wall nice okay so let's try that again and we're going to hit I guess this wall and we'll just look at the health so 456 we're gonna put about 100 rounds so as you can see doesn't really do a whole lot i mean if you want to soft side yourself with this thing i guess it kind of competes with the jackhammer but I Again, they're, I'm very sure they're going to nerf it even more to make sure it's just not used for raiding and that this is really kind of more like an anti-vehicle, anti-personnel kind of thing uh, was going on. So we'll just have to see how that all goes. But hey, the minigun. There it is. How do you feel about it? All right, next up, we've got some changes to Harbor. And before we kind of really cover it, most of it is still on Aux 2. So we're actually on staging right now, and uh, you'll notice the bridge here is kind of set up. And this thing actually I, swings out of the way of the cargo ship. And you'll notice there's some updates to decorations here and there. You've got turrets, and uh, we've got some floating uh, cranes. But on Ox, the cranes actually are, some of them are functional. And you can move around containers, and those containers can be closed up and then stashed onto cargo ship. So you could technically hide in a container on cargo ship in a way. It's some interesting stuff. But uh, also the tugboat doesn't spawn kind of in there anymore. It, it spawns more on the outside of the harbor itself, which is pretty nice. And I believe the way it's going to work, it's supposed to stay for about 8 to 10 minutes when the cargo ship uh, docks here. And then that gives people a chance to fight over it. And then it will start to leave again. So you can load up some stuff, do some sneaky things, sneak on have a battle, maybe drive up with a car, <laughs> who knows, all sorts of crazy stuff could happen while cargo is docked. So it's definitely something that is very interesting. But let's go ahead and take a look at the launch scientists added to the Bradley. All right, we're here at the Bradley and uh, just damaging it should make the protection squad. So we're gonna throw a single C4 on there. I guess... 
sound. So basically, I don't know if the regular scientists here are going to stick. I have a feeling the heavy scientists are actually going to show up. And I think some of them are going to be using the new flamethrower that isn't making it this month, but is still being worked on. And I think they may even use the new minigun. I don't know. We'll have to see. I could be completely wrong on that. Again, we'll just have to kind of go by whatever the commits end up being on that. But the one thing that makes me think they'll be using the minigun is because Face Punch made the Heavy Scientist suit, which if you don't recall which that one is, it is the Heavy... Oop. Can't spell heavy. The heavy scientist suit. It's the big fatty suit from the oil rig guys. They made that compatible with the minigun backpack. And as you know, that's not something that is dropped for players to wear. It's an NPC thing. So that means they're making the NPCs compatible with the minigun backpack. So that's kind of a safe assumption to make there. All right. But before we head out, everybody, we do have one last little treat. The devs did also post a few things of the motorbikes in their early, early, early stages and their super early testing. And here's the work in progress it pictures of you know a single bike and a bike with a sidecar. And uh, I'll just leave you with the video of the sidecar bike being in its early, early state that there is. So there it is, everyone. Thanks for watching. Stay rusty.